Okay, so uh, sorry about that. Um, okay, great. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the UNESCO Hackathon Open Data and Open Science Hackathon uh, pitch event here at the Lifelong Learning Institute. So this uh, um, hackathon was put together here at the FOSS Asia Summit by the United Nations Educational, Science and Cultural Organization um, and especially by the Sustainable Development Goals um, Bangkok office here, represented by Misako Ito, who's here in the front row. We have more judges in the front row, uh, who I will um, introduce to you in a moment, but uh, I would also like to mention um, Youth Mobile, which is an initiative in um, the uh, in Paris, also by the UNESCO, and it is represented by uh, Davide Storti here from the Paris office. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead here and see what else we have here now. Okay, the schedule now, for now, we are slightly delayed already. Um, so, a uh, hackathon and intro of judges, the presentation of outcome, then the judges will withdraw. Um, and have a deeper look in the submissions today and already half an hour later we will have the award ceremony so we are advancing really fast. After that will be the summit closing here of FOSS Asia. So a little bit background, um, some of you have seen it online, some of you have been at the opening event of the hackathon but I would like to uh, remind you uh, of the goals of this uh, hackathon here and quickly go through this. So, for the expected outcome of the hack, the applications or games shall be open source and use open data to tackle the climate change environment and sustainable development challenges that we have on this planet. They shall address one or several of the following requirements. One, respond to pressing environmental challenges at local, national or regional levels in Asia. Two, enable the visual visualization of data in an innovative and or easy to understand way. Three, mobilize and create engagement of variety of stakeholders and sectors in society on climate change, environment and sustainable development. Four, gender sensitive prototype recognizing or encour encouraging women's participation in sustainable development. So, as you can see, it's all about sustainability and that's what we're doing with FOSS anyway, so it's a perfect match here. Um, and um, I would like to introduce to you now the judges that we have here today. So, you already heard about Misako Ito and uh, Davide Storti, um, uh, who, like, it's very nice of you guys to actually make this happen here with us again. And then um, uh, on the right hand side we have uh, Kat Allman from the uh, Google Open Source Department here who agreed to have a deeper look into the submissions. Thank you Kat for joining. Next we have, uh, um, actually I should have introduced you first, but I thought ladies first, um, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ko Tatsuan, Director of the Lifelong Learning Institute and the gracious host here of the Whole Force Asia Summit and the event here today. Thank you very much. <laughs> then we have uh, Hong Fook Dang who has put like a lot of the uh, uh, work here into this event and uh, um, so the woman behind it, yeah? Thank you very much for joining here as a jury member. Um, next, like uh, Mr. Vlado Kolyebabic, head of ca case IT at Daimler, and Daimler becomes more involved in the open source community here, and he also agreed to have a look here at the uh, submissions. Thank you very much. <laughs> and last but not least, with a very deep technical insight here, from Susie AI, the founder, Michael Christen, directly from Germany. Okay, so, well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So it's not last but not least. It's like last, how can I go further with last but not least? Last but not least, of course, here, Dr. Ben Leong. He was actually the first one here today who came over and uh, uh, we just like already like so engaged in the event that I'd like, I'm sorry, I forgot you. It's the Ministry of Education and NUS. 
and you also work on the United Na uh, like UNESCO projects together. So that's why we are uh, uh, have you here on the panel, also with an insight into research and the educational area. So actually, we have everyone here from different backgrounds, and uh, shouldn't be forgotten. It's Open Science Hackathon. So that's why science is uh, uh, very importantly here represented. Thank you very much, Dr. Ben Leong. So, okay, so host applying data analytics, open data and open knowledge as a reminder for the judges. So judging criteria here, we have scoring sheets. The judges have scoring sheets. You could also like, if you're interested, make your own uh, scoring sheet. It's also on the website here. These are the criteria that we will now judge the, speech, uh, the um, pitches. Technical implementation, open data and open knowledge, climate change and environment, usability and UX, it has to work. Benefits to society and market opportunity. We would love to see something that can continue to live after this hackathon. Scalability and replicability. So can it work in different countries and different regions with different people? And of inclusiveness, we really love to see something that can be used by different people, involves uh, diverse groups, involves different genders. So that would be great. Okay, so here's the team schedule and we are slightly delayed, but you can see we planned like only four minutes for teams. We have seen already a lot when we visited uh, your um, uh, tables here during the hackathon and the mentors gave us feedback. So um, we hope we will be able to make a good judgment. And uh, um, these are the teams. So we have 14 teams who really stayed on board and each team has four minutes. This means like we recommend you take like three minutes. We set the timer to three minutes for you. You can sit here in front of the stage and you give maybe the jury uh, a chance to ask one or two questions uh, very quickly and give like a, a, a direct response. The jury is very experienced so they will understand uh, the background uh, um, uh, and, and, and like that it's just 24 hours basically that you were able to code. Okay, so these are uh, here the prizes that we offer. So we have three team prizes and uh, for us it's always like very difficult to say who's the first, second or third one. And for us everyone's a winner. So we have everyone will receive the same prize uh, back with goodie, t-shirt and so on. A pocket science lab so you can continue uh, uh, with science here after the event. Um, and uh, like one of the uh, prizes like Amoeba IoT kit or a Microbit starter kit so you can really get into the depth of open science and open data after the event. Thank you very much and let's start quickly. Mr. Guy also like uh, keeps track of the teams that will uh, uh, come down here now. I will switch back to it. Here are the teams. Weather Guru, Sentosa, Just Do It, Coco Team, SVM. Please line up here on the right, the first team. So when you see like uh, you are like three teams away, come over here on the right, please. So you're ready to start right when the next team has finished. Okay. So that would be that would be great. Okay. So I would like to ask Weather Guru to come on stage now, and we'll uh, uh, fall, uh, do it then. Uh, Torsten here. Next, we will run through it because actually also didn't introduce myself, right? I'm also one of the judges um, and uh, um, I will sit down now, uh, but like uh, Torsten will run through the teams here now. Um, so please, Weather Guru is here, Sentosa, just do it. Uh, no, JS do it, okay, yeah. JS do it, JavaScript do it. Uh, and Coco team, please come here to the right already so you're ready uh, to make your pitches and um, Torsten will facilitate that. Okay, great, so we'll coordinate the teams, Mario, well done. And uh, all the best to the teams ahead. Let's get you guys set up. Okay, weather guru. Um, you only have one projector, so is it? Okay. 
kicking off with Weather Guru. So, team, go. Three minutes. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, we are team Weather Guru. My name is Sharp, and with me we have Syed and Yenshin. Okay, so um, before we actually start on what we want to talk about, our, our tool rather, um, I just want to give uh, some context to what our tool or where our, use, our tools can be used for. So this is an image of Singapore uh, in January 2018. So floods don't usually happen in Singapore very often. Uh, for those of you who, know, who live in Singapore, floods don't happen very often. Um, However, uh, based on the data that we, we saw and collected, um, in January alone, uh, the highest, or rather, uh, it was raining 25 days, and the, the amount of rain collected was about 287 um, mm. And on average, that's about like 11.48 mm per day uh, when it rains. Um, and, and because of all these, like, because we know that floods don't happen very often in Singapore, I think the government had taken measures to to see where um, floods can happen or occur uh, more frequently. So what they did was they planted sensors or like water level sensors around Singapore to detect floods. However, this isn't a preventive measure. It just tells you like, oh, this happen th there's a flood happening here. Uh, it will probably benefit somebody uh, who, who find out about this kind of data beforehand before ex leaving the house. Uh, but it doesn't actually benefit anyone else um, when he or she is like, uh, needs to travel from one place to another. So what we wanted to do is, uh, oops, sorry. What we wanted to do is, um, yeah, so despite all these sensors, uh, this kind of thing still happen. So what we want to do is whether we can leverage on um, some several open, uh, open source data to predict um, future floods from happening, whether fu uh, future occurrences of, of floods. Yeah, so um, have there been systems to predict floods in, in around the world uh, that have been? Uh, so this is what we found from um, the global in global flood monitoring system uh, uh, developed by the University of Maryland. Uh, however, it's not really open source data and even if, uh, we, if we wanted to try, we could leverage on the, the API, but we, we couldn't. So this is a little bit close or proprietary. Um, so, and also it's based on like stream flow and rainfall. So what we want to do is find out which data sets or which features we could use to predict um, future flood occurrences. So what we did was we so we made use of um, the open source data from, from data.gov uh, from Singapore. Um, and the, type, the features that we used was the amount of rainfall that happens a month, as well as the number of, frequent, the number of floods that happen within a month. Uh, it's, these are all historic data. Okay, so we use that um, to predict like, future occurrences. Okay, so we're going to show our application. So this is our application that we created. Uh, so on the top, okay, so how we can predict um, future occurrences of flood is based on the frequency of rain. Okay, so how frequent, uh, the number of days rain in a month. Um, no. oh. Oh. Okay. But sure. Okay, yeah, so, okay, so, um, yeah, so what we wanted to predict is like using the number of the frequency of rain per month to predict the, the, the occurrence or likelihood of floods happening. Uh, this is another analysis. Uh, this is so. What we got here is the threshold. So in Singapore alone, when we take the highest number of day, the high number of days rained in a month, uh, we we sort of use that we use that particular model to predict like which threshold, like which number of days will uh, will there be a likelihood of a flood happening? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is just yeah. So that's Got all. Me. So if you have any questions? Any questions ask. from the judges? <laughs> Is this tool something where the public can use it to prepare, or is this more of a, a policy issue tool? Okay, so at the moment we used uh, two to uh, Excel, Excel Google, the Excel Google Sheets, as well as Tableau, uh, to Tableau to visualize the data, um, Tableau public to visualize the data. Yeah, but I think during the hackathon itself, we learned that there were other tool, other free open source tools that we could use. Uh, just that I think at the moment we only knew that pub, uh, Tableau public was one tool we were familiar with to use. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? So, great first presentation. Thank you, team. Yes. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay. Okay, guys, are you ready? Okay. Testing. Testing. Yeah. Okay, all good. So, second team up is Team Sentosa. You get three minutes and then one minute for questions. If you run out of time, I will have to interrupt and stop you. Okay, over to you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Keith, and these are my teammates, Nor and Zuying, and we are from Team Sentosa. So, my very first question to you is, Sorry for technical delay. So my very first question to you is, if you were from Vietnam, where would you go to find the job? Okay, I believe many of you would have the same answer, that of the major, pop major populated urban cities such as Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi. So for many reasons such as climate change, urban migration from rural areas is a problem and many people move towards these heavily po populated urban cities like Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City. And this creates a stiff competition for jobs and creates a strain of resources for the people who are in these cities. And therefore, we need to... Therefore, our name, our group, uh, our group is Find Rise and the, our aims are twofold. Number one is to highlight prospects in... Uh, highlight prospects in... Sorry. Okay, to highlight prospects in other medium-sized cities and in this case, prospects refer to other cities that receive investments uh, in some form in, in order to develop infrastructure such as uh, water pipelines as well as roads. And secondly, we want to use the highlighted cities to match workers with jobs in these cities. So how do we do that? Let's take a look at our application. So taking a look at our application, we can, you can see that uh, we have used open source data from World Bank uh, in order to find uh, where investment has been going towards in, uh, in Vietnam. So we have highlighted three main medium-sized cities in Vietnam. Okay, and in doing so, we want to let, and in doing so, we, are, we have created a web visualization on our platform, which is a web-based application, so that all Vietnamese can actually access this platform in order to see where there is potential prospects for jobs. And the second part is of, our, of our application is to link these workers with jobs in these prospect cities, okay? So in, in doing so, what we want to do is uh, to work with open source API or any other, for, or API of any other um, job search engines, okay? In this case, we have used indeed.vn. We, we have tried to use indeed.vn, okay? And then we will pass the data that we have uh, obtained via the prospecting of the cities and link these, uh, these jobs with uh, potential and aspiring people who want to move to these cities. And uh, with that, we will talk about the sustainability of our project. Okay, we feel that our project is uh, sustainable because number one, it solves the overcrowding problem in these major populated urban cities and thus easing the resource strain in these cities. And lastly, uh, moving on to scalability, we hope to use open source uh, data and receive contributions from people like, such as yourself in order to uh, develop, our AP, develop our software such that we can accurately create and uh, find prospect cities, prospect cities for these uh, Vietnamese. And if this, is pos if this uh, platform works, it can easily be replicable to other developing countries. And with that, we end our okay. presentation. Thank you. Your time is up. Yeah. Good. <laughs> okay, we'd like to take some questions from the judges. Oh yeah, we don't speak Vietnamese. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it's prototype. So many of the data generated were. Uh, I had to go into the search engine and then I manually populated a data table uh, because we couldn't get the publisher key for the API. So we haven't ran into the problem that you have uh, mentioned just now. So that was why we were able to get this uh, set of results. Yeah, but using that, that uh, set of results, right, we have created, we hard-coded, for now we hard-coded a link to, to the direct 
website. So maybe you can press the. Yeah, so it's supposed to link to Indeed uh, Vietnam. So this is the actual job listing. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Thank you so Time's much. So um, I just want to give a quick tip for the next team. You know that I know that some team have five or six members. If you can skip to say your name, you can save some time, and then you can do it at the end. <laughs> what do you want? Thunderbird. Oh, Michael Thunderbird. Huh? Give it to you. This one? The last one to do it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the previous adapter? Okay. Okay, great. So, next team coming up is uh, JS Do It, Just Do It. And uh, as I said, three minutes for you guys. Good luck. And I'll come to stop you. Okay, hi, so uh, this is the team uh, just to it, um, and we made our app on uh, something called Enviro Balance. So what it addresses is that we are planning to uh, address the problem of tracking uh, everyday pollutants that goes into uh, the, the products that we use uh, generally. And uh, also what we are doing is we are trying to create awareness using that data that we are collecting from uh, from basically the manufacturer to the to the guy who is transporting it, and uh, yeah, um, the example would be we are using smartphones. Everyone uses smartphones, so there are a lot of resources that are being used for making smartphones, and uh, there are a lot of pollutants that go out for making smartphones as well. Um, what we are doing is uh, we are keeping track of whatever. Uh, resources and pollutants are done and we are using uh, and we made our own API uh, and we implemented blockchain there so let me just uh, let me just show you so this is our uh, basic application after getting reloaded we are mining it You see that the node is created in manufacture. At the moment, uh, we only have uh, a lot of hard-coded data, so we are just uh, going through it. Uh, I'm going to use mobile, I guess. Yeah. And uh, uh, these, uh, these data, we haven't really been able to implement at the moment. So uh, this is submitted. And if you go to users and uh, you see you go to car section, you don't see anything because we didn't import anything. And if you go to mobile, okay, if you go to mobile, we see that uh, the the pollutants that have happened, uh, that 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 have, like, are, are the byproduct of making that car, and uh, also uh, the resources. Obviously, it's not wood or plastic is being used for making cars, but so this is a dummy data which we have, and uh, yeah, so uh, that's about it. Uh, Thank you. Ahead of time, um, great to see you guys jump into blockchain from the audience and from the, from the judges. Any questions? So one question is, so, uh, so uh, where is the data coming from uh, exactly? Uh, so, sir, data depends on what basically we are choosing as, as a product. Like, um, if you are taking mobile phones, so uh, there is a lot of data from the internet that uh, gives the resources and pollutants that are being used in while manufacturing and transferring the mobile phones from the companies to the companies. The plan is to get the data from the manufacturers, <laughs> from the directory. Yeah. Other questions from the judges? We still have a bit of time for team. Just do it. Thank you. Uh, so, sorry, uh, can you explain quickly uh, block, how black blockchain is used uh, here to which part of the process? Uh, so uh, suppose uh, he he's a manufacturer. Okay, so he has uh, a particular set of data that 
he should have this particular set of data is what are the things that are being used, what are the natural resources that have been used for making a particular well, car, if, if we take that for example. So he would be in, in, uh, inputting those data there and we would be uh, keeping track of uh, him transporting it to someone else, then to me, and I can just see that how many, uh, I mean, what are the pollutants that are there uh, based on the product which I'm getting. So uh, yeah, that's how, that's how blockchain is implemented there. Okay. Okay, team. Thanks very much. Good presentation. Okay, not a lot of time in two days to do a blockchain product, but uh, we saw a wor working prototype here. Um, next team lined up uh, within all these three minute sections is the Coco team. Let's get them set up and uh, team, as you know, three minutes. All kits up? Great. Okay, so Coco team, over to you. You guys can start. So, hi everyone. We are Coco Team here from Vietnam. And uh, at first we will give some facts and insights about our projects. We are inspired like of, uh, according to a research of World Bank into, in uh, like of 1995, they said that uh, Ninety percent of disease in the developing country are caused by the polluted water resources, and it's caused like a serious uh, disease for the people in uh, developing countries. In Vietnam, also a developing country in Southeast Asia. So, um, because of in industrialization and awareness of the citizens, so it um, creates polluted water. And also, is, this is the disease of the polluted weather, like cancer, skin disease, hepatitis A, and uh, diarrhea, elephant tetanus, and cholera, and kidney stones. And uh, so, uh, our our team problem statement: How can we uh, help to detect polluted water area? Uh, and one in as well as uh, sent to the action plan for the citizens who live in the big cities of uh, Vietnam. Uh, we build a coconut platform that's also on the app and on the web too. And uh, the user can report the issue to the platform and the issue they, uh, they can report in like a water, pollution, air, sound, soil, or so so uh, everything. But now we focus on the water first. Uh, and so it's will the authorities like government or authorized uh, organization can aware of issue using the platform. And after that, they can make action like an online, like send information or action plan to the user. Or also the offline, like go into that plane and check for the water quality at this area. Uh, so this is some of the open source and open data we use, like data we contribute type by the user and also public to the, uh, available to every, anyone. Okay, we also use the open street map, Python. Uh, we will demo some of the, of this. We have a video demo here. Uh, And we will have a, like a, uh, we will chatbot here, and that is sort of the, the sort link to the, the, the chatbot, and we go type it. It's very so slowly. And it will display like that, and have a welcome, and we issue the report. We will send the location and report the issue. Okay, so, okay. Team Coconut, Thank you. we got a demo. Any questions about you guys? I think the time was pretty good. Go ahead, judges. Uh, over here. Uh, 
So you rely on the user to provide the data. Do you use any like existing data set for? Right? Yeah, at the beginning we do not have any data, so the, the user will input the data report, and after that the other user can use it, public on the website. How did you build a chatbot? The chatbot. How did you build it? Did you use any uh, assistant application, internet, anything, or built from scratch? The chatbot that you have here. I was built from scratch. Oh. Okay, thank you. Who does this data go to, and what happens with it? Um, who does the data go to when the citizen reports it? <laughs> okay. Well, great team effort. Well done. Go team, well done. Okay. I know it's pretty hard to demonstrate uh, kind of all the work that's gone in, gone on behind the scenes, but it's great for the teams to have this opportunity to showcase just a glimpse of what they've been working on. Um, the next team up is SVM. Is it? That's right, SVM. Let's make sure you're all set up. Okay, so SVM over to you and it's drop tables team next. You got three minutes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good afternoon or good evening everyone. Our team, we did a mobile application. It applies in web, mobile, Android, iOS, everywhere. The app is everywhere. So we did a project called iServe and why do we need iServe is because food and climate are not two different things and this is the carbon emission thing and there is 6.7 percentage by food waste in carbon emission and also there is a country called food waste which results in carbon emission. If you see the list of countries food waste is third in carbon emission so without food waste is a pitching issue which we should work on and here are some percentage of food waste from all these countries which we are concerned about. So what did we do is we did a application mobile application which is in the middle between there is a plenty of food getting wasted and there are a lot of needy people the needy people can be an NGO which needs food for the people in the or orphanage or anything or there can be fertilizing manufacturing companies who need food waste to create a degradable waste or anything and there might be farmers who can use this as a fertilizer so food waste is there people are there there is something missing in between and our app comes in picture there so how did we build this backend is firebase completely html css bootstrap very plain simple javascript and stuff and it's available across triple w ios and android using Cordova, we just packaged it so let me quickly take you through demo of our application. I have it in Visor. So we, the user can gain the description of the food waste, let's say uh, hackathon food waste. So let's say it's 10 kgs and it expires in two days and it's edible or non-edible, whichever form it is in. And it's like home cooked food or from restaurant or from supermarket perishable foods or anything. So if I have any special instructions to get there, I can key in. So let's say MRT and I can give a pick location button so it will pick the location yes it picks the location and if I want to upload an image I can choose open up the camera click a picture and upload the image and if I save info the image along with the location along with everything gets there and it says you're amazing yes thank you so now these details are added who will use this data so in the menu if we go there there is an option for find the food so if you go to find the food and this part I was working on it and time is up so coverage this and I can set it and if I click on show the places it will show all the places which are nearby and if I click on any one place and it would show the picture and expiry in dates and the time and everything related to that and there is a link take me there and once click on it it has to it will open Google Maps and some small bug just has to get to that location it opens Google Maps yes so the data is in Firebase now we have got the data about food waste we yesterday looked for a lot of data about food waste we have got the data about food waste and this data is used for a lot of analytics which we will be doing so this is how it looks. A lot of analytics which says the amount of food waste, which region, all those analytics which we did using Tableau. Okay. Great.
Well done, within three minutes. Okay, from the judges on this topic of food waste. Very good. Um, again, where the data come from? Uh, the, from the users who give the data, who are using the mobile app, we get the data and we do this analytics and get this result. We had some plain data in Excel so that we can perform this analytics with Tableau. So it would give different categories and whether it is edible or not and the amount of waste in kgs. So all these we did with Tableau with some initial data. Once the app runs to the market, it will be able to sustain in the market with a lot of data because data is power. With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, what, uh, um, like, uh, you, you said you use already existing projects, some existing libraries? No. Uh, Complete from scratch, uh, from HTML to slash HTML. Ah, okay. So, it's a, it's a web app? Um, yes. Okay. So, um, I, I know there are already initiatives, similar initiatives like that, but uh, they might not be open source. Yes. Yeah? So uh, is that your angle or do you ha also yes, have Yes, we had to, we wanted to get the data and make it open source and use tools like Tableau for analysis which would give the government to plan more or NGOs to get the data more because there is a lot of food waste and there is not much people who can use it. So we want to be the bridge as an open source bridge between these two. That's yeah. our plan. Okay, so Tableau is not open source but like uh -huh. uh, maybe we could use uh, 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 JSON and then like yeah. analyze it with Elastic yes. or something. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you. you team. Well done. Okay, super. As you can see, a lot of technology going into these uh, projects with uh, Firebase and Cordova and well done. I mean, hard to put together. Next team up, uh, from what I can see, is Drop Tables team, which is coming down. So uh, while um, drop tables are setting up, Team Resto will be next. Test. Hello. Test. Okay. So you're online, and I'll give you three minutes. Over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. We are Team Drop Tables, aiming to provide aid with the eye view of a region. So, what are the problems with open data today that we might face over the time? As you, as you know, during our research, probably during all your research, there is a large number of available open data online. And this results in many, many problems. Some of which is just difficulty to compare data, multiple, multiple data at once, difficulty to analyze them and draw conclusions. And this results in many, many different uh, downsides, such as it's very hard for non-profit organizations such as NGOs and other individuals to target areas that is aligned with their goals and without doing a lot of, lot of research. So therefore, this result in a requirement to have a lot of preparation time, a lot of research, and a lot of time loss. So therefore, we introduce to you 8i. So with this, we'll be able to compare, visualize multiple map data uh, available online, and therefore increases efficiency uh, and effectiveness when analyzing data. So here's a demo prototype with some data taken from opendevelopmentcambodia.net. So this is the website. So, so as you can see here, uh, we have taken to use Cambodia as our target site. So this is currently the map of Cam uh, Cambodia with some data available. The data you can, uh, you can click on the site here to open the data. So right now we have the electricity coverage as well as the mine casualties. They can, uh, both of them are represented, uh, one of them is in polygons, and one of them is in a version of heat map. So the users, the NGOs, can search the specific areas they want to target at, such as, I say I want to target health, health hazard. I can select health hazard, check the box, and then it will display the health hazard box. If I don't want to show the box, I can uh, remove the other values. So let's say electricity. So now you use electricity. Now let's say the uh, NGOs want to have a closer look at some of the region they choose. So what can they do? So they can, they can actually simply by dropping a pin. Let's say I'm very interested in this region. I draw a pin here by clicking on the screen. Now this, this will basically tell us, uh, reveal the information in the uh, cardboard box here, right here. So you show you the coordinates as well as some of the information based on the data we have implemented inside. So you can see uh, points within coverage, is there any recent points? 
mine casualty uh, density, as well as uh, nearest in incident away. So with this, I can, uh, NGOs and other individuals can much easily assess data, analyze data, and use data for their, for their needs. Uh, are there any questions? So this is purely a data visualization tool that can be used as a tool by any nonprofit, regardless of their subject area. Is that correct? Uh, yes, it is a data visualization tool, but we aim to bridge this uh, difficulty of analyzing multiple data as there's currently a relaxed uh, tool online that really allows us to put multiple data together and analyze it at the same time. Any further questions from the judges to this visualization platform? Uh, where did the data come from exactly? Uh, we took the data from Open Data Cambodia. So it's a format of uh, Mac, Mac JSON. So it's a form of JSON file with all the coordinates and mm -hmm. all the various details. As you can see, from, just from the coordinates, it's very hard to use to analyze some of the details on the map. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, uh, how can people uh, use that? For example, I can, like, as a interested party, I can embed that in my website or, or something like that. What, what's the future usage? What will you do in future with it? Um, oh, uh, that's, that's definitely possible. So as you can see, right, we actually, uh, we actually have a repository on GitHub and it is uh, very possible for uh, like other partners to be able to work with us and we can implement it as maybe an iframe like widget within the website. So uh, let's say that they want to focus on a selected amount of data on their website, right? They can select them, and when visitors go to their website, then visitors will be able to see those data already done like, uh, very easily for it. So, and then, uh, most importantly, because we are using open data, that means that our data is also continually updated. So that, uh, so that means that uh, our data will be like, up to date, and people will be able to see the current situation and work from that. Mm. Okay. Excellent. Great. Drop tables team. Thank you very much. A round of Thank applause. Thank you very much. Okay. Excellent. Good. Perfect. I think it's very useful to have this type of visualization for any type of planning, especially in maybe high risk areas or navigating certain terrains. Um, of course, always depends on the quality of the data, which I think is a, a whole new uh, topic. But um, we're going to move on to Team Resto. It's ready here. And so, um, judges, please uh, hear three minutes of Team Resto. Hi, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We are Team Resto, and we are going to solve a problem that we face every day in Southeast Asia today. So the problem we are going to solve is the recycling. Uh, next, please. So this is a common uh, issue you see every day uh, uh, in our in the Southeast Asia region. And then uh, the reason behind this issue is that public has little incentive to use the sorted recycle bin and it, it actually requires a mental effort to, to sort, your, uh, sort your garbage. So the solution we are going to present is a thing that uh, combine a deposit machine with a trash bin. And by combining them, we will get the our Restro recycling machine. Uh, now we start the demo. Uh, so first we go to our website. The website is called Restro Portal. It's a map of all the Restro machine we have across the, the, the region. Uh, now we use Singapore as an example. So there are three uh, dummy uh, recycling machines we put on the map. And now we're going to demonstrate how a person will use the machine. So this is the screen of the recycling machine. And you will tap the dispose now in order to start using it. Uh, now a scanner will be open. You drop your garbage into the bin and then click scan. And our AI engine will start to process the, the scanning image. So now it detects a plastic bottle. You can scan more items, for example. For example, some electric, electric, uh, electrical waste, like keyboard. <laughs> uh, it's currently uh, identified. 
and for example some metal lakes like uh, drink cans if the identification start uh, have an error you can also report the error we will still cap the garbage uh, but we will record down like uh, tagging it as an uh, data with an issue so maybe just get uh, one more to to go to the end uh, yeah um, maybe we just uh, sk uh, scan a dummy uh, just to uh, yeah. So uh, no object is detected. Oops. I should click the done to verify. The okay. Yeah. So now after you deposit your garbage, what we are going to do is provide some incentive for the user to use it. So now we are giving uh, some free gifts like tissue paper with advertisement on it. <laughs> And now we go back to the, our portal. Uh, so this is a portal we can monitor all the uh, trash we put okay. inside. The time's up. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, well done. <laughs> Great. So over to the judges with any questions on Restro's recycling project. Yes. Do you do recognition of the uh, Yes, we use the Google Cloud uh, Vision API. So it's a TensorFlow-based uh, yeah. Object recognition engine. Um, I can't see the submission of the source, but can you please submit the source code in the next minutes? Uh, sorry, uh, excuse me? I, uh, in your repository, I can't see the source code submitted yet. So can you please submit the source code? Oh, uh, we, yeah, I think we submit it through a zip folder. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, we also have links in. Here. Uh, we put our source code on GitHub, it's publicly available. Uh, sorry, uh, did I answer your question? Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, we use some uh, pre trained data libraries so that p other people have already tagged those items. We use the pre trained data set. Uh, but if we commercialize this idea, uh, then we will probably train the data ourselves with our own camera, for example. Uh, fake pictures. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a hard challenge. Maybe we can try to use uh, multiple camera. That's what I just think of. Uh, it's from different di dimension. That could be a solution. From the judges? You had to weight it in the machine finally and to cross check it. If somebody put a picture or a real barrage into it. Oh, yes, yes. Great. Okay. Team Restro. Thank very you very interesting. Much. Thank you very much. Well done. Okay. Um, grab that one. Okay. Can we set? Okay, so an interesting pivot to uh, recycling and encouraging uh, get a better, better kind of consumer behavior. Um, we're going to move on to, oh, that was environmental value. Is that right? No, we changed the name. Okay, we got a different name. What is the name now? Yeah, what? Uh, okay, can we bring that up first? Okay, so the judges are making notes, getting ready for the next session. Um, so, to correct the name of the, the team that's coming up is Wisdom Buster. Um, and I'm going to give you three minutes. Over to you. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, Wisdom Buster. For us, something is very important. It's to spread the wisdom in this world, and particularly on the climate change. With that, said it's bringing knowledge to the people. We will leverage two big notions, data, AI. Data is nothing. 27 is data. Data in a context, it's information. Analyzing the information, you bring some knowledge. If you do a lot of analysis, you will have some wisdom. So what we did is trying to combine a lot of 
different sources, and we'll see it's very difficult at the moment. But with an interactive tool that is completely done with Python and uh, interactive widgets, so open data, open source, we can bring knowledge to, for example, uh, develop the opportunities of green energy in the world. Let's switch to the team. So easily, for example, we can fix some dates, choose, for example, one indicator to analyze. And here, you will have some information. So you can see that in time, it's evolving. Here, you can see even that all the pink dots are more at the top. So that means that there is some global warming in Thailand. And we can go even further. We have to be honest, it's not real data. Because we don't have enough data at the moment, we don't have enough details. But what we could do is to provide some recommendations. So where will you implement this kind of energy? And we can even see that on a map. So we are coming from a raw data that we have to prepare. It's the main thing. But as I said, we need more detailed data. Currently, all the open data that you have is aggregated data. So we'll have, for example, monthly data. So we will find a way to maybe with more incentive on this side uh, with, uh, let's say, gamifications. So we'll, you reroute uh, the people giving you some information. Or you can even monetize that maybe in a second step because you give back wisdom taking their data because you cross the information. So everything is open source, as I said. We have easy access to all this information and it's a tool that is easy to use for everyone. So it's a beginning. Today is very short to present a quick thing, to present a global thing, but quickly we can do things totally open source, bringing all the information together. It's a community, so we can even find that we will use Google tool. We will collaborate with uh, Suzy to have the chatbot to search on this data at the end. We can uh, work with uh, education because people can work with us, for example, to develop this project. So let's collaborate all together to bring wisdom on climate okay. change and other topics. All righty. Good. Thank you very much. OK, over to the judges. Team Wisdom. Some questions from the front? So there's a, is it there an application? Or this Here is it's a Bokeh application, so all Python. Bokeh is a specific web application development uh, that you can have uh, locally. Here it's locally. It's in book. Uh, again, like a question, where's the, where's the source code? <laughs> The source code is it's here. Not, it uh, it has been done with Google Colab, so it's uh, based on the notebook widget. So you have widgets to uh, have the input from the user, and after it's all the, the backend is inside the notebook in the VM on the Google. It's uh, ma basic machine learning tools. <laughs> it, it's just a Python notebook there that you can interact with. To uh, industrialize yeah, it, we can put that in a proper web application with HTML or even a bokeh application in a server, yeah. as you want. Okay. It will depend. So it's exactly as it has been said before, it's like open data. We can scrap it from the web, connect that with APIs. Here, it, uh, we didn't have a lot of time, so it has been done manually. But uh, the main thing is with API is good, uh, it's quick. With uh, scrapping, you have to maintain the code. That's why if you have a good community to work on it, you can quickly identify the sources of the information that are not available anymore or change. Yeah, you can mix whatever. It, it's to show that, for example, you can, uh, here it's basic. But after, you can mix information. You can even cross uh, information, for example, temperature and precipitations. Uh, you can, uh, it's uh, up to you to visualize whatever you want. And uh, it's also the goal of the experts to work with the business to build the relevant tools for the users. OK. Well, thank you for the explanation. No, Good. Thank you very much for the team. Well done. Thank you. Um, great. So.
I mean, a prototype working on a local machine, perhaps still early stages of what we're putting together. And yes, the data points is very important. I think the big question always is where does the data come from? Are we using APIs? Are we using external data providers to bring the data in? Which is uh, core to this project and core to this uh, UNESCO hackathon. So great, the next team up is uh, Thieves Team Save Mekong, if it's right. Okay, you got your microphone already. Okay, judges, so this is the uh, Team Save Mekong. I'm giving them three minutes for this pitch. Let's see. Oh, we're just having a short technical issue. Maybe we will see if we take another team first. Okay, so we're going to switch from a Windows platform, obviously. Uh, perhaps part of the root cause here of this uh, technical issue um, to another machine. Let's see if this works. Okay. Huh? Yep. So let's have a look at, let's see if we bring the next team on board and I'll let you guys uh, see how you best connect. So in order to continue the sessions and keep the flow going, we're going to have uh, Team PAX, P-A-X-S. I'll give them a, just a minute to set up too. Okay. What do you have? Perfect. Here we go. I'll set up this. Come back in a minute. Okay. And I guess that goes in here. Okay, you ladies have a microphone. Okay, so we're going to skip ahead with the, first, with the next team, Team PAX. Also for the judges, just to make sure you yeah, capture that on the right sheet. Ladies, over to you. We're going to give you three minutes. Okay. Okay, hi. We are Team PAX, and we decided to touch on water pollution. So our problem statement is actually uh, we notice a lack of access of clean water within the Mekong countries. So our mission is to increase the awareness of water pollution. So our solution is to create an interactive game that can be used by everyone to increase their engagement while acquiring knowledge. It also can increase awareness of water pollution in the Mekong countries to provide real open source information and statistics on water pollution in those Mekong countries. So now we'd like to move on to the demo. Um, so our data was manually inputted by um, f w with the, using data from the open development website, that, um, which is an open data source. So the idea behind this is that we want to combine uh, typing tests and at the same time educate people on what, um, what is the current issue with uh, water pollution regarding uh, Mekong countries. So. Scroll down, please. Um, so over here, we don't have much data, but we did put in a, a chart to show that, um, okay, these are the kind of information that we want to present here. And then we maybe further um, include more um, information regarding these countries. So now, can we move on to the um, actual game? Okay. So, yeah, this is our typing test. Um, for our for our presentation purposes, for demo purposes, we cut it short, but by right the uh, paragraphs are supposed to represent the open data that we gather from open development. So, yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thanks very much, ladies. Um, to the judges, some questions to Team Pax. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah. Um, so what do you see as a future use case? Like how will people use this specifically? I guess it's more of just their own awareness, and so that they won't be like so inclined to, um, you know, throw rubbish in like the beach or something. Yeah, that kind. Of thing. And maybe you could also have a follow up for them after gaining awareness. They could maybe have a link to like a charitable do organization where they can help them out as well. Okay, let me understand this more carefully. Yeah, so you're going to be drawing open source data from this on these countries and picking them into typing exercises, right? Correct, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so first of all, I, I think I, I I mean, have you found sources whereby it's actually paragraphs of text because often data over time is numbers right and then in, on, on the map the other thing is actually the other question is also your typing is mostly English right but most countries actually English is not the first language yeah. so even if you get over data the paragraphs of text huh, it may not be an English text so how is it going to work yes we did think about it we were thinking maybe we could use a translator for the different countries so we could translate it to their language and then they could still play the game Maybe I missed something. I, I didn't really get exactly the, the point of, uh, of the application. Can you can you very quickly just uh, re-explain uh, uh, what is the uh, what is this doing? Because I, don't, I didn't get it really. Okay, so basically, um, I don't know if you have played a typing test before, where people actually like just type, there will be a block of text and you just literally type and they'll give you your words per minute. So the idea, we are just using that idea and um, making the information itself um, more related to um, water pollution. Yeah. Okay. Did we, did we capture that, uh, Davide? You go. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> how, how can the user type in something? Yes, typing tests. Yeah. How does that relate to water pollution? Um, it's more of because our our mission is to increase awareness. You see, so mm -hmm. we do it through the paragraphs of text that they actually type up. Okay, so so the, the text itself it's uh, about water pollution. Sorry again. The text itself is about water pollution. Uh, yes. So you, you get uh, awareness of it through yes. this test. Okay. okay. Yeah, for it's for the demo purpose. That's why we only yeah. put one word. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, team. Thank you very much, team Pax. Um, I think that was. Thank you very much. The applause. So I think team Pax was really trying to demonstrate something with how they would tackle water pollution from a kind of a gamification point of view and a bit of an inter interactive approach um, on how to educate better behavior and instead of just polluting and throwing garbage into the rivers. Um, just to keep the things going and, uh, and, and, and moving, um, the Team Save Me Kong still has some technical issues, uh, so while we're getting settled, we bring in the next team called Team Medon, uh, Mendon, Mendon, and uh, Team Mendon, you seem to be ready, so over to you. All right. So our main uh, problem that we can you hear me? Yeah. So our problem that we tried to solve was that a lot of people do know about global warming, do know about problems in the sustainable development, but they ask a simple question: What is it that we can do about it? If you walk from here to your home or any other place, you know how many calories you burned, you know how many steps you took, but you do not know what you did to save the environment. We are providing you that solution. We are gamifying the experience to help everyone, every single person, contribute to saving the environment and that way bring about a societal change. So the reasons for uh, the carbon emission that we saw, the highest was electricity and heat and the next highest was transportation. So right now in the prototype that we have, we are using the transport and trying to reduce the carbon emissions from each person due to transport. I'll hand over. Yeah, so uh, despite the fact that uh, the 
uh, number of vehicles in Singapore is, is reducing, but still the fuel consumption is really high. So if we talk about petrol, so in 2015, so around 6 million barrel uh, petrol has been consumed. So uh, the, the uh, ba one barrel is around 196 uh, liters. So that is huge. Okay, so the, if we are using more fuels, more fuels are being consu uh, consumed, so the uh, carbon emission will also be very high. So the goal of Singapore government is to reduce the carbon emission from 2005 to 2030 is by 36%. So if we say that 19% of total uh, carbon emission is due to uh, transportation. So our main goal is to uh, motivate people to walk instead of taking car for short distances. Uh, so. so we've uh, made an Android app to solve this problem. So what we do in the Android app is that we pull your data from Google Fit and uh, we know how many kilometers you've walked and now we have a factor uh, like our data team researched and we came up with a factor that converts the number of kilometers you've not used a vehicle into the amount of carbon emission that you've reduced in the environment that a normal person would have done. Uh, so in this app over here we see that kilometers saved is actually the kilometers that you've walked, run, uh, cycled or used any other non-carbon emission means of uh, transport and uh, the carbon emission that you reduce is uh, 0 0.26 kgs. Uh, from our research we found out that uh, the carbon emission, uh, an entire tree is required to offset the carbon emission of 1.88 kilos. Uh, so as you see 1.38, uh, I reduce the carbon emission by 0.26 and we tried to gamify this. So this progress bar sort of uh, increases as you uh, walk more and uh, I have the distance left. Uh, to earn a tree. Now, uh, in the next one. Oh. So this. Awesome. I mean, great. But your time's up, <laughs> team. Thank so, you. really just got to keep it short. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just hold on to that for your questions. Oh, sure. Any Is questions? there uh, open data created or used? Yeah. So, uh, we use uh, data from, uh, we've used data from LTA the Land Transport Authority and uh, data.gov.sg uh, to get all of the statistics for uh, Singapore. Yeah. Uh, this used for the conversion factors. Yes. Okay. Um, so what are your plans for the future? What could you yeah. do in future? Uh, so in the future, what is it like, like here what's written here? Pardon? Yeah, this is for the, the next steps? Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. So, ah, so what are the next steps? So, uh, in, uh, in the next step, what we'd uh, like to do is that we'd like to build a smart home component. So that since we uh, saw in the earlier slides, electricity is a major source. And uh, like the smallest of example, once you leave your house, you're out of the, your house for 12 hours, but your router is always on, Wi-Fi is always on. We can cut down on that. Your aircon is always on, even when we're moving to other rooms. We want to automate that and automatically switch it off when you travel out with your phone. If you go out of the room, we want the lights to be off. Uh, also, uh, certain corporates have something known as CSR, which is Corporate Social Responsibility, where they are obliged to give 2% of their turnover to a social cause. We'd like to engage those markets. We'd like to incentivize people uh, and uh, make them gain something from actually saving the environment. So we could have like uh, coupons or something like that, or probably Amazon vouchers later on if you're able to gain enough traction. Okay. Maybe one quick question. Pardon? I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Yeah. It tells you how much you've walked. Is that right? Yeah. So, and it detects automatically whether you're walking, you're in the car? Yeah. It does that? Yeah. How do you do that? So we're pulling uh, data from Google Fit as of now. So uh, Google Fit has an open API. That, so basically in our app, you uh, log in using your Gmail account. So we have a auth. And after that, we start accessing your, we ask for permissions. And then we start accessing your uh, Google Fit data. Okay, so Google tells you whether the guy is walking or yes. is on a car. Thanks. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I would be interested, like, uh, if if uh, that could be implemented as open source, for example, this feature, and especially like, I find it interesting your ideas with like uh, uh, other devices. Yeah. So I, I really want to do research if there's any any standard out there that can actually like be used. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, but like, let's. I understand. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. No, I'm sorry, I Interesting point, yeah. Mario. Good. Okay. A uh, round of applause for uh, Thank you so much. Uh, team Mendon. Thank you guys. Okay. Thank you so much.
Okay, well done team. Mendon, this is team Mendon. Team Mendon. So team Mendon was the walking tree saving app that we saw just now. Hello, hello. Carbon footprint. <laughs> that's, what, that's what you call it. <laughs> okay, so on to the next team. Let me pass you the mic. No? Okay. Um, this is Bugs Life, right? Okay. Okay, so while the judges are still conferring and uh, taking notes, we're getting ready to uh, bring the next team, which is uh, Bug Life. Is that working? Okay, Bug Life. So moving on to Bug Life, while uh, our previous team is still settling some technical issues, we'll slot them in later. Okay, Bug Life, I'm going to give you three minutes. We're starting now. Okay. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Manish and this is my team, Bug Life. So we are here in front of you presenting our solution for the farmer. So the title to our solution is Kisan Seva, where Kisan stands for a farmer and Seva is hell. So basically, what we are doing, we have built a solution which is completely open source, built with completely open source technologies and using all the open source and open available data through different government portals to help solve the problems faced by the Indian farmers. So in India, 50% uh, of the agriculture sector employs more than 50% of the Indian population, but it basically contributes to just 14% of its GDP. So we uh, went on in search for the problems that basically happen or which are the cause of this. So we, know, we came to know that low literacy levels Lo no loan facilities, no knowledge and basically no awareness or inadequate knowledge in about government schemes are the basic problems that a uh, farmer faces. So we went on and completely made a new solution to provide the farmer with each and every uh, things. So this is the farmer suicide rate in India that part. Okay. So what is our solution? This project aims to create an Android application which will provide uh, information to farmers. It will help in increasing agricultural outputs and will keep them up to date with recent research, government plans and statistics. The application will provide existing data obtained from given reference sources and other trustworthy services. And since we have done this for Indian farmers, so this application is available in Hindi as well. So we have integrated two open source technologies. Uh, so we use SUSI AI for creating a special skill that basically tolerates uh, the uh, problems faced by the farmer which acts as a engine where farmers can go and basically chat to know what they can do in certain cases. We also integrated Loclack so that uh, we can uh, give notifications to the farmer just in case if there is some calamity or some drought that is happening so we can fetch the da live data from uh, Loclack API and give notifications to them and they can even go and browse other things uh, related to agriculture. So since we know that uh, not a lot of people have, uh, if we concentrate on farmers, they do not have uh, much in internet but due to digital age they do have Android phones so this application is an offline first application the only internet that you might you might need to use is just to interact with SUSI or to get the live data all the rest application is a completely offline based solution that you can see on the left hand side of your screen so this is where you can basically go and chat with SUSI and these are the three main things that work offline and we have also integrated the call center number uh, that is prepared by the Indian government so that the farmers can go and take in help from them. So this is, and we use the completely open data provided by opendata.gov.in provided on the Government of India website. So this is what we are presenting here. Thank you. Well done. Still got 15 seconds to go, but uh, over to the judges. So this is designed to work on low-end phones and consume limited amounts of data? Yes, it is basically an offline first application. Thank you. Any further questions from the judges? Mm. Any questions? If we're good. One more, yes. Uh, how do you think you can replicate that in other countries? Yes, basically that was a task. Uh, what we can do is, uh, because we are already using all the open source technologies and open products, we can basically encourage people to create different type of skills, uh, for example, and we can also add uh, various uh, translation methods and uh, translation methods uh, for each and every different countries. 
and with different skills and different parameters, we can ask people to come and collaborate with us into making this a better thing for each and every country. Because as we know that uh, farming can be considered as a root dependency since we all are tech people, we can always consider that if a root dependency isn't working, we cannot ever think that a country will be developing if the farming sector that basically provides each and everything isn't working. So this is what we have been. Um, cool. So is the, um, the skill uh, for the um, conversational app here uh, already online? Yeah? Ye yes, we actually built it during uh, this hackathon. So it's in, you can say that it's a prototype that we built. It is available on the skills.soc.de website as well. Yeah. Cool. And uh, so um, is it possible also to, to speak? With it? Uh, Did yes. you try it out it has already? All the functionalities uh, like you can uh, even do speech to text. The farmer can basically speak, and it will automatically convert it into text. And the chatbot is also able to speak back the responses as well. Yeah, mm. but the speech functionality is still online at the moment. But maybe you're thinking, could that be the future to have it offline? Yeah, maybe we can actually maybe try to com make it a completely offline application. So that would be better as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, team. That's very good. Thank you. Round of applause. Good, and I think Mario, some valid questions around you know these prototypes and these presentations being real products, something that they've developed, and the team has committed into the uh, Git host, uh, GitHub repositories. Uh, so it's all about sharing and getting the getting these projects out there and demonstrating these uh, data points. Great. So on to our next team. I think this is, uh, if I got it correctly, Nayana, this is in Infit. So this is Infinite. This is the last team on your list. Um, we are skipping Apple Pie. I think that team did not submit anything today, but we did have a great turnout. We've got 14 teams in total, which is fantastic for this first hackathon of us. And so over to Infinite. I'm going to give you three minutes. Uh, yeah, so we are Infinite. We are not wasting any time introducing it. Our project is all already on GitHub. You can look at our source code. So uh, what we are trying to create is a predictive smart contracts for conservation of farmers using open source blockchain technology and IoT based farming. Uh, so like uh, first I would like to uh, answer the uh, reason of scalability. So we have looked at the data through UNESCO and we can scale our app to all these applications, land degradation, depletion of water resources, etc. So this is an official UNESCO documentation and we would like to address these statistics how will our app solve these. So uh, basically we have uh, solved the app from both the farmer's point of view as well as the society point of view. So now first I will show from the society point of view. So uh, these are the questions that we are trying to answer like how can we give incentives to society people who help in farming and who help farmers. Um, next. next. Uh, so like uh, this is the thing we are doing like we are staking an amount for each thing so people invest on like these lands like whoever is farming and uh, if some person doesn't farm or doesn't use an efficient source of farming their stake will reduce in the blockchain so like people their people won't like the stakes will get redistributed so people will have to support farming okay and so okay so this is our website it's hosted in github pages you can just have a look at it and like uh, we'll know whether like people are farming this is a data visualization tool already available on the internet so uh, you'll be able to see like whether uh, there is tree loss or anything it's an working up uh, go to our uh, so like we have from the farmers point of view we also have an uh, iot based Im uh, implementation of Uh, so uh, from so farmers have to make their farming efficient, right? So we are, we want them to reduce the uh, uh, farming wastage. So what we have done is like uh, we have made a, a website that helps them record their things and uh, provide a smart IoT based solution. So like it'll record all these values from a sensor placed at those plants and it'll collect the data in a backend server which we have done using Django. So uh, this can also be used by the companies for data mining and others and like. If it's already raining, like they don't need to water the plants, right? So they can manually control their controllers, or like it'll be automatically controlled by uh, the data already available. Like you can use machine learning algorithms to improve upon it. But uh, this was a prototype you can do, and we have uh, like a graph visualization to like when the data comes, they'll be able to see that on the web app. Okay. Uh, 
for the map. Next bit. Next bit, next bit. Last. Okay, well done. Just out of time, but uh, good effort in trying to demonstrate. Over to the judges. Sorry, I think I missed the part on the blockchain thing. I, I don't know what the blockchain was doing and I couldn't figure out what the blockchain like, thing was uh, all about. We are helping the farmer, uh, like uh, everyone expect to conserve something, uh, everyone expects to have some intensive uh, incentives in return. So we'll do like uh, from all the satellite image data, uh, if someone is doing something good, like care, uh, let us say that farmers are uh, taking care, uh, what, what we'll say, uh, taking care very well of their farms means from the satellite data uh, the po the amount of incentive will be given to the farmer will be more it will be used as smart contract to deploy that means what you're gonna give them bitcoins or something i don't know yeah 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 in the new cryptocurrency to, to do something So, so what does the smart contract do? Yeah. And how is measured that the farmer is sustainable? Like we are getting... Uh, Like we are getting satellite images, we have the, uh, like there is a API called uh, gain for, uh, open gain forestry, from that we are fetching the details, uh, let me show you. Like uh, we just recorded it on my uh, laptop, uh, like it is visual. You can see if the trees are reducing, like we want to <coughs> Not only trees, we can extend this to other natural resources also, like ponds, rivers, for conservation of any other resources kind of thing. Do you suggest to create an Ethereum uh, currency for this? Like yeah. uh, we haven't yet. We just tested it on our local RPC, that's all. Yeah. Okay. P -p people can like donate. Uh, we just selected as farmers as use case. We can, that can be extended to all. Like uh, uh, ponds, rivers, lakes, etc. Et any natural resources. Even we can consider land also. Is this, is this in some way operable? So, is this in some way operable so that I, as a farmer, can apply to get yeah, a yeah, share yeah. on this? We need to deploy on a deploy it on a chain. Okay. Okay. I think we're kind of getting towards the end of the evening. So, thank you very much. A round of applause for our team. Thank you much. Okay, so that was Team Infinite. Team Infinite. I N F I T. Infinite. Hmm? Uh, Mekong is this one. So Mekong is now the last team going to come up. Uh, this was Team Infinite. Okay. Interesting to see all the blockchain usage because uh, we obviously still got to find some real world applications where this technology does work and does go down to grassroots levels. Um, so, well done. And now, I think we have, this is save, Team Save Mekong, all up and running. Okay, so you're the last team to go, and I think then we're going to close the session and we're going to give the judges some time to confer. Over to you. So, good evening, judges and fellow audiences. We are teams, Team Save Mekong, and as the title states, what our app does in general is it predicts the future of air quality through data sets we actually gather from online sources, and we use some analytics from past data we collected from past years to actually derive the future year's data. Yeah. So one of the climate problems we chose to address in the lower regions of Mekong was the rising air pollution and the health issue the people there face. Okay, so the app aims to act as an like early warning system. So basically it predicts the data from the past, all the open data and the past sources we have collected from and it generates out future data which the people there can use as a reference to see whether the air pollution index is going to exceed in the coming years. 
and from there they can actually take preventive measures instead of like damage control measures like after they found out that oh the air is actually the pollution level is actually pretty bad for them then they start like taking measures to like fix the problem yes so our device also aims to help to allow stakeholders to contribute suggestions and solutions to uh, lower to help lower the emission levels for these countries and communication channels for fast roll of the measures yeah, so the, these are open data we use and these are some of the platforms we actually used in the web application okay so now i'll take you guys through the demonstration okay so this is our app okay um let me just talk about the infographics okay so over here we have um data the what you see in blue is actually the actual data what you see in red is actually uh, what we uh, what we have done using our predict analysis, okay. And then, furthermore, okay. So over here, this is another infographics. You can see that from uh, what we see is that we set it as like uh, from past years to now. If there's gonna be more than a 0.1 percent increase, right? We will we will mark it in red, and then if not, it will be in green. So um yeah. So red is over green is um, still good okay and we have a list of suggestions okay that people can take if they want to um, that people can take if they want to try to implement okay we have uh, add suggestions you can actually add suggestions like okay yeah and then you update inside okay and then for uh, furthermore, okay, what this does is that there's, uh, let's say you have a few relevant authorities and that you are quite satisfied with the uh, idea so you can actually email them by selecting the, who you want and what ideas you want and you can email yeah, and, they'll send, and they'll send out an email. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, well done. I think your time's about up. Okay. Thanks, Team Save Me Kong. So the judges, last round of questions. <laughs> this is your chance to ask the hard ones. <laughs> so just make sure I understand your app, right? So your, what your app does is that you're reading open source data to understand the air pollution, uh, historical air pollution, and you show those countries that have increased air pollution in red, right? So that you can let people give suggestions how to improve the situation. Correct. Actually, the, my concern, is, my question is that actually it's not about air pollution. I mean, necessarily, right? It can do all kinds, right? Water, whatever. So it's like a general, general pollution or whatever, you know, bad stuff happening in the environment kind of a system, and then you can let people be aware and and send suggestions to relevant authorities. So it may not be just air, correct? So basically, our whole aim is to create this automatic feedback system. So right, uh, whereby we analyze the data, right? Using the One more question from the judges, otherwise I'm going to wrap it up. Any last question? Okay, have a Yes, uh, maybe I, I didn't probably get, uh, you know, um, okay, there is, uh, there is uh, all this data, there is a prediction, and you can send uh, suggestions, right? So how do you see it, uh, all these many citizens doing this? How do you, how do you manage to... Uh, get citizens to participate in this uh, exercise, basically. Uh, in this case, uh, the citizens are more of a citizen. Right? So, uh, in the, um, our two ID uh, products, uh, there's two platforms. Platform for authorities, government agencies, uh, let's say, uh, any company, 
So, so, so the, the predictions are uh, quite, uh, you know, uh, short in time. I mean, it's a, it's a prediction that goes in the next couple of days, or it's a prediction which goes uh, in the next year. Uh, we uh, we actually focusing on months because uh, it's uh, more than it's more than middle. Because by days it's too short, and uh, by year it will be too wide again. So, uh, we we are planning to set it by. Okay, so a round of applause for the last team, Team Sidney Kong. Okay, so that really wraps up um, the presentations, but more importantly still to come is of course the judges uh, discussing, assessing uh, which of these teams uh, really integrated these APIs and really demonstrated a workable product. Um, we'll give them a few minutes, and, we'll, and uh, okay, so, so we want everybody back here at what time? It's uh, 10 to 5, quarter past. And before we get to the award ceremony, because the jury has actually reached a verdict, I would like to everyone here to applause for these fantastic projects that we have seen here at the Hackathon. <laughs> so, it's really been great and um, I think we just go straight to the, to the awards. And, um, yeah, so we have uh, uh, three winner teams, but I have to say it has been like super difficult. Like it was, everything was super tight and there were a lot of pros and cons and like we were thinking, of, oh, how can we create more prizes and what can we do? Um, so um, we hope that we can have more hackathons with you guys soon and also see a follow up on what has been done. And uh, so we will definitely follow up and think about ideas how we can collaborate with uh, everyone here who has been part of it um, and continue it. And of course, you have done this as open source. You have used like uh, open data as far as possible, um, but you have also raised awareness that we need more open data. So it's a very important message here. And it's great that we have the UNESCO as an intergovernmental organization on board because uh, Misako and Davide, you can go back now and uh, give feedback and, and uh, like raise the issue, like tell people that we need more of this open data. So, who are the winners? Like everyone's thinking about. Um, and uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Leon here on stage to announce the first winner team, but we don't have like a second, third uh, winner team. It's just like a row. So we have three winner teams and I would like to announce the winner team and then we'll have a small ceremony here inviting the winner team to the front stage. Thank you, Mario. Uh, as Mario said, uh, it was a very difficult uh, decision to make to decide on the winner. Uh, main reason why we decided was that we wanted to go home. So we decided we had to settle on some people. So all of you here uh, have done a really good job. Uh, and I congratulate all of you. Okay, so for, it's my privilege to announce the first winner. And this is not in order of uh, merit. I think the three winners are, you know, kind of all winners. The first one is a team from India who work with the farmers. It's called Bucks Life, right? Okay. Okay, so... Uh, while they come forward, let me just say a few words. I, I think the, the app that they are trying to build is really interesting in the sense that it actually addresses the problems that they face today. They use the open source data very well. Uh, and I think one of the things that is really quite interesting uh, in their app I noticed was that they actually took into account the localization, because they did in Hindi, right? And they were going to do it in other languages, uh, which is very important, because uh, this was another team that I quizzed on about 
calling this Vietnam data, you know, but in English, which was, I think, kind of not very applicable. So they've done a lot of good work in terms of actually thinking through uh, and ensuring that the app really works. Uh, and also, I think the app is not just for India, but potentially for other countries, you know, just as long as the governments can give the data. So on that, on that note, I hope that uh, with this, with this uh, little victory, you will continue to uh, do good, okay, and hopefully uh, actually see this app in production. Thank you very much. I congratulate all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I would like to invite the other uh, jury members, please like, uh, come on stage and feel free to congratulate the, uh, uh, the winning team. Um, so we have been very impressed. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Leon. So I hope you have some time afterwards also to talk with everyone. There are a lot of technical questions here uh, that people have. And uh, yeah, we continue. And we have a second winner team that will be represented by Dr. Tat Swan here from the Lifelong Learning Institute, the director who's hosting also this event. And like, uh, I know it's a ceremony, but I would also like to get an applause for the Lifelong Learning Institute for your work and hosting us. <laughs> Excellent. And as uh, the part of your engagement, uh, um, you are now like also uh, participating here in the hackathon and uh, handing over the second prize. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's my privilege to announce the next uh, winning team, Team Restro. Congratulations, yeah. Good job, yeah. Good job. Yes, uh, Team Restro uh, that is, 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 uh, is also an uh, overwhelming uh, uh, challenge for us to decide the winning team, but uh, we felt that uh, the team has uh, contributed uh, in the recycling uh, arena and it's, uh, it's a very meaningful project. And it's also close at heart in terms of Singapore. We are trying to encourage recycling and it's also quite an unsightly scene. You can see from the photograph that our people are not really able to do a good job. And uh, with this uh, project, uh, we hope that um, we will see more people uh, being able to really help the uh, spirit of recycling and then putting the, the various uh, items in the right, right way and the right form. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah.
Excellent. And uh, so, this was really great. And uh, we have a third winning team, and the third winning team will be uh, presented by uh, and awarded by Misako Ito from the United Nations uh, UNESCO, which is part of the United Nations somehow, uh, um, uh, office in Bangkok. Thank you. For, for, for this team, we had a long debate among the jury because it was in a competition with another team, but we specific value one important point is really the presence of a female in the team. And so, <laughs> so the team is Coco Team. <laughs> For UNESCO, for UNESCO promoting the participation of women in science, engineering, technology is a very, very important point. And it's not only for UNESCO, but for the whole United Nations Agency. But uh, in addition to that, you know, the, the project they presented really had a very innovative way to engage the, the people and to engage the, 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 the citizen and the civil society together to raise their voice and provide feedback so through a platform so that the government can take action so this really complement another way to uh, you know to uh, to to tackle the environmental challenges and we found that uh, project very innovative and very interesting congratulations So this was the UNESCO Hackathon here yeah, about open data and open science and uh, we're going to continue in a moment, we wrap it up because we're moving over to the closing. Um, actually we're all exhausted so there's a bit of a question like who's going to like take the lead now, it was like four exhausting days, it was fantastic, so much input and we would like to get maybe few questions from you would like to share the feedback form so it will happen in a moment